In this session, we'll discuss how to calculate and use the Hearst exponent to detect the presence of long-term memory in a time series of asset prices or returns. Momentum can be thought of as the persistence of an asset's returns. Positive returns tend to be followed by positive returns, negative by negative. The Hearst exponent is also referred to as the index of dependence or index of long-range dependence. It quantifies the relative tendency of a time series either to regress strongly to a longer-term mean or to cluster in a particular direction. It relates the autocorrelations of the time series at different time lags and the rate at which those autocorrelations decrease as the time lag increases. Lastly, we'll look at one method to calculate the Hearst exponent based on ranges of lags for a time series. If we look at these time series, what do we mean when we ask if they have momentum? Can we tell which of these has momentum? Momentum is a tendency of a series in our case, stock prices, to continue in the direction they're trending. Momentum is a type of memory within the series. Depending on this memory, the series is more likely to do one thing or another going forward. Series one in the table on the left is monotonically increasing by the same amount each period. If these were an asset's price, we could say that the asset has upward momentum over the period. Series 2 is also increasing over the time period shown, but has decreases at times 3, 8, and 9. Momentum is positive, but not monotonic. The graph on the right shows FAS trading in a tight range over the time period shown. Hard to see any momentum there. Here are the previous two graphs and a new one. One of the graphs shows mean reversion, one momentum, and one Brownian motion. Can you determine visually which graph shows momentum, which shows a random walk, and which mean reversion. Mean reversion is pretty easy to identify, but it's a bit harder to distinguish between momentum from a random walk. Now let's look at the Hearst exponents for each graph. Hearst can range from 0 to 1. The left graph is random walk or Brownian motion with a Hearst of approximately 0.5. The middle has moderate momentum as the Hearst exponent is a bit greater than 0.5. Although the left and middle graphs seem similar, the random walk graph is a bit more jagged and shows frequent reversals of direction, while the middle graph is a bit smoother and shows a clear uptrend followed by a downtrend and then by another uptrend. The graph on the right is mean reversion with the Hearst well below 0.5. Here we see up moves generally followed by down moves around a long-term mean of around 540. A value of 0.5 indicates a true random process. There is no measurable correlation between the latest return and the ones that preceded it. A Hearst exponent of 0.5 to 1 indicates persistent behavior or positive autocorrelation. Auto if there's an increase from the preceding time step, then there will likely be an increase the next time step. The same is true of decreases, where a decrease will tend to follow a decrease. This creates opportunities for momentum trading. A Hearst exponent value of between 0 and 0.5 will be for a time series with anti-persistent behavior or negative autocorrelation. Here, an increase will tend to be followed by a decrease, or a decrease followed by an increase. This creates opportunities for mean reversion trading strategies. Now let's look at a series of graphs with uniformly increasing Hearst values. Each series represents a different Hearst value. The top left starts at 0.1, increasing by 0.1 across. Bottom right is 0.9. The further away from 0.5, the greater the impact of the memory, i.e. stronger momentum or mean reversion. Hearst exponents are also useful for detecting when a return series has a long-term memory. In the equation shown, P of k is an autocorrelation function of lag k, which measures the impact of the kth lag return on the current return. An LMP is a process with a random component where a past event has a decaying effect on future events. The process has some memory of past events, which is forgotten as time moves forward. For example, a large increase in the price of a stock creates positive sentiment around the stock, causing more and more investors to want to buy the stock, 
creating further demand and moving the prices up. The market acts as if it has some memory of what took place, although the effect of that initial price increase decays over time. This is the fundamental reason why longer-term momentum trading exists. In a long memory process, autocorrelation decays over time, and the decay follows a power law. Power law decay time series are characterized by autocorrelation functions that decay at a rate of k raised to the minus alpha power, where k is the lag and alpha is the decay parameter. When alpha is between 0 and 1, the time series exhibits strong persistence with values closer to 0 indicating even stronger persistence. When alpha is greater than 1, the time series exhibits high frequency or alternating behavior and is said to be anti-persistent. The Hirsch exponent is equal to 1 minus alpha divided by 2. Since alpha is assumed to range between 0 and 2, the Hirsch range is between 0 and 1. To recap, the Hirsch exponent measures the degree to which a time series either regresses strongly to a longer term mean or cluster in a particular direction. Important values of Hirsch are 0.5, which implies the data follows a random walk. A Hirsch closer to zero implies mean reversion. A Hirsch closer to one implies momentum. In the lab that follows this course, you will use a method for calculating the Hirsch exponent that is based on using a variable range of lag values from 2 to 20 in the example shown here. We determined the Hearst by first calculating the standard deviation of the difference between a series and its lag counterpart. We then repeat this calculation for a number of lags and plot the results as a function of the number of lags. If we plot this on a log-log scale, we'll end up with a straight line. The slope of that line gives us an estimate for the Hearst exponent. As the algorithm shows, Calculation of Hearst is related to the autocorrelations of the time series. Autocorrelation, also known as serial correlation, refers to the correlation between a time series and lag values of itself. In this example, the lags range from 2 to 20 periods. In particular, Hearst is related to the rate at which these autocorrelations decrease as the lag increases. We know that we get different values of HERS depending on which lags we use in the calculation. So which lags should you focus on? There's no simple answer to this question. Hearst exponents have been proposed as an alternative to moving average convergence divergence indicators, or MACDs, that we covered in the previous session. Like MACD, the signals from Hearst must be backtested using varying time windows of lag values. If you'd like to learn more about the Hearst exponent as a trading signal, please have a look at the reading assignment, Hearst Exponents and Trading Signals Derived from Market Time Series by Peter Kroha and Miroslav Skula. They give a good survey of the theory behind Hearst and also create a moving Hearst trading signal that they test on NASDAQ and DAX data versus an MACD signal. They conclude that moving Hearst is a better trading signal than MACD, but that its profits are more than offset when realistic trading costs are factored in.